Today in the shop, we got a customer that sent us a Tika 22250 that he wants converted into a 22 Creedmoor. We're gonna get this thing broke down and uh, spin up a brand new Wilson stainless barrel for it. All right, we got everything all broken down. This gentleman actually sent a Oryx chassis to swap it into. I'm excited about that because first time I played with one of these and the quality and the fit and finish of that thing looks absolutely amazing. But yeah, we're starting off with the Wilson 1 and 8 twist blank. We're going to get this barrel unscrewed and uh, get this rifle knocked out. So I used to drill and tap the end of the barrel and that worked great and it didn't have no issues, but just trying to figure out another way so I didn't have to drill the barrel. I cut off a piece of barrel, drilled and tapped it, and then used two hose clamps to fix it to the barrel blank. I've only had one leak and it was my fault that I didn't tighten it up. So. All right, I got the bore dialed into the center axis of the machine, both radially and angularly. So we're gonna take this out. And this is also my drill chuck holder and it's also my reamer holder. Set perfectly on the axis. Plus I use a floating reamer, so if there's any out of alignment with the reamer holder, it'll still line up centered with the hole. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our tool set offset. It's gonna come in here and face. It's gonna, I'm gonna cut this off and then we'll cut our threads, do our finishing pass and then drill. After we get done drilling, then we'll ream with the boring bar. And after we're done reaming with the boring bar, we'll use the finish reamer. So now we're going to blow out the chamber with some compressed air. Check our head space. It should be short. So we'll throw the go gauge in here. Close it. And we'll grab our feeler gauges. And let's try five valve. Five thou almost four thousands goes. So now we're gonna go two thousands deeper, a thousands for crush and a thousands for clearance. Once we get that cut off, which will be six thousands, we should be head spaced. Well go gauge and I got a three thousands piece of tape in there. And I'm gonna try and close it and we're a hard stop. So we'll take that back out. Remove the tape and the go gauge should still go. Nice thing about using tape versus an actual like no go gauge is you know exactly how much clearance you got. So this is between a half to three thousandths of clearance between the go gauge and the bolt face. So we are set. So now I got it out of the lathe. This is already cut to the diameter of its finish. I think Tika's at 1.125 OD here. So now we got to cut it off to its length. He wanted the same length as the original 22250 barrel. So we're gonna saw that off and then I'm gonna contour it. He said contour it whatever I think's best. Well, I love straight contoured barrels, so we're gonna contour it at the muzzle. It's gonna be uh, 0.725. And we're gonna start the contour here, straight 725. So it's gonna go down nice and straight and it's gonna look awesome. All right, now you can see Cut everything nice and smooth. The coolant's lubricating everything. 
It'll just keep cutting until it's down to the profile. All right, now we're taking our finished pass. It'll come through, take 10,000 off everything. It'll blend in all these steps and imperfections. And then once it's done with that, we'll just go uh, lightly sand the outside if there's any blend and uh, mount it to the action. All right, we got it all set up. We got our tool offset set. And away we go. Seems like this thing's always in the way for my videos. We'll speed up to wrap it here. <clears throat> On all my threading profiles that I do, I start from the inside and work my way out. The reason I do that is a lot of times when I'm doing a blued barrel or a Cerakoted barrel, if I push it the other way, sometimes the chips get stringy. And when the chips get stringy, they uh, scratch the paint. I don't like doing that. Just cutting the chamfer right there for the threads to start. Then it's going to pull back. And then it's going to cut the relief groove. Some of the suppressors I've seen don't have that relief groove cut into them so they won't go against the shoulder. Next thing we're going to do is our threading, so we'll move our coolant over here. Any guys done any threading on a manual machine, you'll know this is a pretty wonderful thing, switching over to the CNC way of doing things. I go down nice and slow, only take a little bit per pass. I don't do anything in a hurry. The program is written so it goes in 29 and a half degrees and it gradually in, uh, gets thinner. So the beginning of the cut cuts off quite a bit. As we get towards the end, it cuts off more threads so we take off less material. Do the measurements here of the threads. Uh, see what we got to adjust for our wires, and then we'll do our final pass. So using our thread wires, we're seeing we're 637, 636.9. The dimension's 633.9, so we're going to take off three thousandths, and that should get us in spec. Because some people get concerned that I use CNC equipment. So if we go to our offset tool two, our X wear is right here. So we're just gonna go, we gotta take off negative 0.003 thousandths. So that's gonna adjust our tool in three thousandths without touching anything on the machine mechanically. And uh, we should be good to go. So let's make that cut go over we're only going to go five passes on this one and a skim pass so now we're going to go here and we're going to double check and we should be in spec Six three three six. We could be as low as as high as 0.6639. So we cut our tolerance for our threads. We got a nice class three fit. So this is a muzzle. Oh shoot! I got tight. Thread protector. As you can see, just by your finger going like that, it gets tight and stays tight. That means you got some good threads there. So the next process is going to cut the crown and I don't use any coolant when I crown and the reason being the rifling on the barrels 
screw and it puts fluid on the back side of my uh, machine so I don't crown with I don't crown with any coolant. These are taking really really skinny passes. It's only two thousandths per pass. For this I used to use high speed steel but I found a really sharp carbide little boring bar that you see there that does a fine job. Gives a nice good crown for us. That's burr free and <clears throat> getting the feeds and speeds down on this for kind of challenging but now that I got CNC it I can do a lot neater work, in my opinion, than what I could with the manual machine. I guess I could get the same amount of work. I just had to try a lot harder to do it. So that was the last pass. Now it's going to take a skim pass. Last thing I do, I just take some of this. It's got oil and coolant on it. And I just touch it a couple times. No real pressure. Just so if there is any burrs, it gets rid of it. I do it both directions. And polish up the threads if a person wanted to. It's generally not needed. You see how tight they were. <clears throat> and the final check that I do, there's several ways to do it. I always just take the thread gauge just to see if there's anything on there. Another way to do it, guys do it, is take a, a cotton swab and stick it in there to see if there's any cotton hairs left but I'm confident in this tooling and the way I do it that as long as I don't feel a little uh, a little prick or any drag on my thread wire like so I know we ain't gonna have no issues so that's that she's threaded so hopefully I can get it to focus on here but you could see it's a beautiful finish this thing does. I got everything dialed in pretty good. So all I do is take an old thread protector like so, put it in here, tighten it up in the chuck. <clears throat> we don't really put too much pressure on it. We're just holding it so it can spin. And then this does all the work. I hold it upside down so we go against the grain. We'll turn this on. Doesn't go very fast, so don't need to. We'll start our polishing. You can see, beautiful finish. If I, if I kept going, it'd be mirror, but for a hunting rifle, that's almost too shiny already. So we got uh, light burn for a laser. Built a vice I guess as you call it got everything level life is grand there I'll make sure we're lined up and then I'll push play well here she is a completed project got the scope mounted back on as you can see this laser engraver just does such a neat job it really pops in that black oryx chassis I think the only thing that looks better then black on stainless is laminate wood on stainless. But other than that, build uh, turned out amazing. I'm sure it's going to be a shooter. All these Wilson blanks have been awesome. I showed you the crown earlier. Everything turned out nice there. So, anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you guys uh, learned something following along. And as always, God bless and have a wonderful day.